so well guys uh, the there is this question from uh, a person called nishi um, so uh, this this is this text is in telugu but i'll try to convert this into english so what nishi says is seems to be uh, interview question you know which is being asked you know again and again in most of the interviews so the question is like you know there is some dynamic value there is a token or some dynamic value or the session that is being generated okay and it is changing for every 10 minutes okay so there is a session value okay a token value or a session uh, some session id or a token value okay so <clears throat> session id or generally it's a token i think okay token okay token id okay <clears throat> this is being generated for every 10 minutes okay which means that okay so right now 219 so there is a token id that is generated let's say the token id is so and so okay this is the token id now after 10 minutes exactly which is at 229 okay the token id changes so this new token id that will be generated let's say this is the token id that is being generated okay so now the script obviously you know this token id you will correlate it okay again this interview question is for somebody who has been working on load runner or jmeter for a while okay so they know how to handle the token id so basically you will correlate okay correlate this token id this token id okay and then you pass this pass this token id uh, at the later part of the script okay so this is all good brother this is all good so far now the point is okay you, you have created the script and you are running in vugen you are running in vugen okay you have created the script you are running in vugen it will definitely pass definitely pass okay it will pass okay it will certainly pass there will not be an issue because right now you are running it so there is a token id that is getting created and you are using it it's all good after some time again you are running it okay so the new token id will be created and you will be using a same token id is created and you are using it it is fine or the new token id that is created and you are using it it will be fine so there, there will not be any problem because you run it with only one iteration you run it with only one user so the, in vugen this will not be a problem most likely unless you are running the vugen for for more than 10 minutes okay but you in vugen you run it for only once or you know twice you know just to make sure the data is good the script is good but you don't run it for 10 minutes right so you're running in vugen for more than 10 minutes then there could be a problem that's a different story okay <clears throat> but when it goes to controller when it goes to controller okay usually usually you run for one hour you run for one hour okay so <clears throat> at 219 okay 219 the token is created and you you started using the token id uh, you know in the script and this runs for one hour which means that for the first 10 minutes the script will work fine after 10 minutes you see a new token id is getting created then the script will fail after 10 minutes the script will fail after 10 minutes how do you handle this okay how do you handle this situation okay how do you handle this situation okay now now what do you do okay let me open the vision guys again i'm not i don't have the case studies to uh, simulate it but on the high level i will try to explain how it can be handled again there are multiple ways to handle this brother programmatically you can handle it so many ways you can handle it okay i have faced this situation as well multiple times i'll tell you how i have handled it okay later on you can decide how you wanted to handle it yourself okay let's take let's take this script okay let, let's not take this script let me take let me add a new script okay okay let's say this is my new script okay and let's say this is my login action okay this is my login action and let's say booking let's say it's an amazon okay uh, and then you are booking some product okay so booking product okay and then let's say we have a login action logout action as well 
again i am a ballpark i am just putting these things okay so that it makes uh, it's easy so there is a lo login action there is a booking product action and there is a logout action and usually in the real time projects you will create something called main main action okay or main okay there is a, there is there is an action called main okay <coughs> and basically you will call you will call all these actions from this main okay so i'm moving this up okay okay so in my runtime settings i will only be executing the main action again this looks little tricky but again it's not that tricky as well okay in the in the in the in the runtime logic i'll be executing only uh, the main action okay wonderful save it okay and in the main action i'll be calling these actions okay i'll be calling the login action again in the real time projects this is how people will do it brother okay i'm not doing this just because i have to handle this okay but usually in the real time projects people usually organize it this way okay so log out okay again i'm not i'm not creating a main action and calling these actions in the main action so that i can handle this situation no this is how usually it will be done okay in the runtime settings you only call the main action and in the main action you will call all the actions that you want <clears throat> okay now watch carefully this let's say this session id again i am taking a situation and in your interviews you can say that this is the situation that you have faced and this is how you can handle it okay so <clears throat> in the login action this token id is getting created assume okay token id is getting created token id is created okay in this uh, in this login action obviously what you will do you will correlate it okay correlate this token id and let's say the correlated value okay this correlated value you are storing it in an lr parameter called in an lr parameter called token underscore id okay let's assume you have stored this uh, in an lr parameter called token underscore id okay in the booking flight obviously you have to use this token id you have created a token id why do you create a token id so that you can use it at the later point of time okay so you are using there is a web underscore submit underscore okay submit underscore data somewhere in this one okay uh, this token id is required so you call this token id okay so you call this token id token underscore id okay token underscore id so again i'm not building the whole web submit data brother okay so there will be multiple parameters in that there is one parameter where where you might have to pass this token id so you have used that token id okay so you have used that token id over here okay now now basically what happens login you execute once booking product you execute for that one hour and logout you book you execute at the end okay now the script will fail because in the login you execute once and then you keep executing the booking flight okay for one hour okay which means that after 10 minutes this token id will change okay so what you have to do after 10 minutes you have to go back to the login and you have to create a new token id and then you have to come back and start executing the booking flights okay that's exactly what you have to do uh, otherwise after 10 minutes it will fail okay so how do you handle that okay first let's assume you do the workload modeling or then you you understand how long this booking product action will take to execute okay so this let's say this booking product action is taking one minute okay this one minute includes all the think times okay all the think times okay all the think times in this booking product script okay plus response times of the application okay plus plus your pacing time whatever the pacing time it is okay so you keep 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 executing okay let's say all this for one iteration for one iteration let's say it is taking one minute well it is taking one minute now now what you do is after what does this mean after 10 iterations so this so for one iteration for one iteration okay it is taking one minute okay it is taking one minute okay so you calculate how do you calculate it you can put a web start uh, lr start transaction at the start lr transaction at the end and you calculate it or you can go to simply um, uh, runtime settings and uh, somewhere here you can say define each action as a transaction then it will give you how much time this particular action is giving which action booking booking uh, products action 
okay let's assume it is taking one minute for each iteration then what happens after 10 iterations 10 iterations it will pass for the first 10 iterations it will pass okay 10 iterations it will pass because it is changing for every 10 minutes what does this guy nishi is saying okay the nishi is saying that uh, nishi uh, gentleman is saying that it is changing for every 10 minutes okay so now what happens so after 10 iterations till 10 iterations it will pass okay it will pass okay after 10 iterations it will fail after 10 iterations 10 iterations okay script will fail okay will script will fail wonderful wonderful okay so <clears throat> first 10 iterations it will pass that after 10 iterations it will fail because why 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 it will fail because because why it will fail because you know the new token id is getting created you are still using the old token id and that's why it will fail after 10 iterations now what you will do is in the main action okay you put a for loop here okay for i is equal to 0 okay and i is less than 10 okay i plus plus okay so okay so so uh, uh, <clears throat> now what happens is and then only execute the booking products for this for loop okay if there is any syntax errors bus uh, please ignore it okay so is this a semicolon or a comma it's been a while that i've been away from load runner guys so is this a semicolon or a comma is something that you can figure out or i can just quickly check it as well online okay It's been a while that I, you know, I haven't used this, okay, uh, thing for so long, okay. It's a semicolon only, okay. So yeah, I had, I had some memory. So I've, it's, it's, it's been like what two years that I have touched VU Gen, guys. So that's why I had to check. So what happens now? You see, in your runtime settings, what you are calling only main action you are executing. Nothing is there in user in it. Nothing is there in user end. So it goes to the main action. It will execute from main action. What will happen? It will execute the login action. So in the login action, it will go. It will generate the token ID. Okay. Then what happens once it generates the token ID, then it comes back and executes this for loop. In the for loop, what you are saying, you execute the for loop. You execute this booking product for how many times? 10 times. 10 times. So it will execute for 10 times. So each iteration it is taking one minute which means that it will execute this particular sorry it will execute this particular block for 10 minutes it will execute this particular block for 10 minutes and after the 10 minutes it will go ahead and log out it will go ahead and log out and then then again it will go ahead and run the main action because you you put the script in the controller and you said you run it for one hour which means that all this is being executed and after all this is being executed you will go back and execute the login script go back and execute the login script again in the login script the new token id is getting created then the booking flight will be executed for 10 minutes and then you can go ahead and execute this for logout so <clears throat> this number of iterations will change depending upon how much each iteration time it is taking how much time it is taking for each iteration and how how often this token is being generated is it for 10 minutes or it is for more or it is for less so this is how you can do it brother is this the only way to do it again you can do it for any number of times okay and you don't want it to drive it from controller you want to execute the whole thing from uh, view gen itself you can say for i is equal to whatever it is you wanted to execute for one hour right for i is equal to uh, for j you can put j is equal to zero okay <coughs> j is j less than 10 okay then j plus plus okay and this whole thing you can execute for this whole thing you can execute for uh, 10 iterations which means that this is for 10 minutes and the whole thing for 10 10 times which is which is what not 10 times six times you have to execute okay six times you have to execute because you want to execute for one hour so this one executes for this one executes for 10 minutes and like that you you execute for six iterations which means that the whole thing executes for one hour you can drive it from here but controller usually takes care of it you need not have to do that so this is how you can do it brother is this the only way we can do it no but this is how i have handled one of the student came down to molali which is which is where we are in uh, institute is located uh, in hyderabad in molali so she came and then i helped her build this and it was working so this is how i've exactly helped her and you can drive it from 
runtime settings as well brother okay you can put the login script here log out here and here you can run it for six iterations you can drive it from here as well okay which is very simple but in the real time projects this is how people drive it and the token time changes or something needs to be done it can easily be modified here that's why people usually drive it from main if you take in my classes you know all this you know all this why we drive why we create a main action and from the main actions why we execute all this because it will make it very very flexible okay um, but you can drive it from the runtime settings as well you can put six iterations here okay so you can just put 10 iterations here okay and then login you can you can add the login here and you can add add the logout here okay and here instead of main action you can uh, sorry not block hang on one second okay you can add the uh oh you can add the booking flight and you don't need this one okay you don't need this one i can hang on okay i need to delete this okay so okay so this is how you can handle it as well so this one executes for 10 times and after 10 times login is executed and then you will go back uh, hang on this one move up hang on one second move up okay so <clears throat> then you go back and ex and you don't need the user in it at all you can remove it if you want but anyways so you can execute the login okay and then you can execute the actually you need the user in it because it initializes it even though it is not doing you can put it first it will it will go execute the login generate the booking flight it will execute this booking using the token id it will this booking flight will be executed 10 times and then log out this will take 10 minutes and then it will log out then you go back and execute the login so this is how you can drive it as well but that's not how you wanted to drive typically you can drive it from the main so this is what my answer is brother if somebody is watching it and they have any um if they have any suggestions they can let me know but again is this the only way no um, you there is a start and end transaction and you can calculate exactly the time uh, with the start and uh, with the start transaction and end transaction as well and then you calculate how much time it takes for 10 minutes and then time by I mean dynamically as soon as it reaches 10 minutes then you can go ahead and then generate the login programmatically also you can handle it but I'm showing you the simple way okay so <clears throat> uh, uh, yeah there are other ways to do it as well as I've told you okay uh, so uh, I'm not gonna showcase that I hope this will help you okay thank you guys see you in another video